Hello, viewers. Welcome to yet another segment of It's a Learning Curve. Today, I'm extremely happy to welcome my very close friend, Dr. Vaishali Batra, to talk on the topic of resume writing and CV writing. Throughout my series, I have covered a lot of topics like social network, professional networking or social networking, importance of scientific publication, how to write a scientific article, patent filing, uh, academic uh, career, and the most important of all these, which connects all these is the art of resume writing or CV writing. So before going ahead and talking in details about this topic, I would go ahead and request uh, Dr. Batra to introduce herself. Dr. Gautkot Bani, thanks for the wonderful introduction. Uh, before I introduce myself, I would uh, congratulate you for, uh, for your new initiative and implementing an excellent idea of creating a series of informative sessions. With that, I would start. Hello viewers, my name is Vaishali Batra and I started my uh, journey on eternal yet ever interesting path of science with an undergraduate degree that was Bachelor in Physics from University of Delhi, India. Um, I was deeply interested in learning science and technology that motivated me to uh, continue with master's program from the same university that was, that was Amtech in nanoscience and nanotechnology with one year of specialization in nanophysics from University of Joseph Fourier, France. During my master's, I was involved in various research projects for nanoelectronics process development that was uh, mainly semiconductor uh, fabrication and processing techniques in different labs and uh, companies uh, back in India as well as in France. I would name a few. CA, CA Letty, where I worked as an intern in a collaborative project with ST Microelectronics France. And I worked as a junior research fellow at Solid State Physics Laboratory, one of the DRDO labs in India. So all these projects uh, boosted my inclination towards research that I um, decided to pursue uh, my PhD in electrical engineering at the University of Alabama, US. So my PhD research focused on exploring ferroelectric material based uh, capacitors for photosensing applications. In addition to working on uh, ferroelectrics and semiconductor materials, I got a bit of experience by, uh, through working as an intern at Nano Ranch UHV Technologies in Texas. And I'm currently working as a process engineer at Intel Corporation on next generation uh, processors. Thank you very much. This is a really incredible uh, profile and there are a lot of feathers to your cap. So congratulations to that. Um, with that, I would like to uh, make it a point that at some phases of your life, maybe when you're completing your degrees and trying to seek your very first job, or you are trying to switch jobs to get a better position in your career. Every candidate has to go through the process of resume writing or CV writing. However, unfortunately, there have been a lot of questions and concerns. In short, there have been massive confusion as to is a resume and CV two different documents or can resume can be used as CV or other way around? So before going into the details of reg skills on writing a resume or an attractive CV, I would like you to request uh, to give us the exact difference between a resume and a CV. Thank you, Dr. Kodbani. It's an interesting and appropriate uh, question not only for the inspiring researchers, but for everybody in their career when they are looking for a job or looking for, a, for switching a job. So primary and basic difference between a resume and a CV is the length of the two documents. Basically, resume is a brief summary of uh, your education and experience that, is, that has to be put in one to two pages. 
while on the, on the other hand, CV is a detailed story of your career and it can be as detailed as possible with no limitation to the number of pages. So it can have information about your education, internship, teaching skills, research skills, presentation, publications, membership, uh, or any other activities or achievements you may have. So uh, while considering the length of the document, we have to focus on the other two uh, points that are extremely important and must be considered while writing any of the two documents, let it be CV or resume. So what are those parameters? I would start with the first one that is format. So it's very important to choose the right format of the document, basically how we organize it. So we have to organize it in such a way that it highlights your skills and reader can have a, like reader can glance at it in one go. Let it be CV or resume. So we have to think out of the box to make it look different, highlight different sections of uh, your resume or CV so that it's readable quickly. Then the next thing is to consider goal. So it's very important to understand the end goal of the document by distinguishing your reader or employer. Having said that, we should know where to use CV or use resume. So CV is generally used for academic jobs. It can be faculty position, postdoctorate positions, or any position related in research labs, or it can be used for research fellowships, grants, etc. And can have all the necessary information, but again, in an organized way, so reader can have your, an idea of skill set in few minutes. Whereas resume is used for industrial job, it should be prepared in such a way that it's readable within 30 to 60 seconds. I'm taking the extreme upper limit of 60 seconds. Um, if it is exceeding that limit, we still got to work on it by, uh, and cut it down. So by recalling the points I mentioned earlier, so how can we do that? We have to be very specific in including just the relevant information that is uh, specific to the job requirement. Any skill that is irrelevant to, to the job can exceed the length of the document. And if employer is interested in your profile, he can ask you for the detailed uh, skill set or he can ask you for the detailed skills. Thank you very much. This was a very clear differentiation between a resume and CV, and this will give uh, the uh, job seekers a very good insight on how they should uh, write a resume, depending on what they're applying, what post they're applying. So maybe in one line, correct me if I wrong, if I'm wrong. I can say that resume is your research experience at a glance, at a quick glance, whereas a uh, curriculum VT is uh, the reflection, the mirror reflection of your entire research journey. Yeah, thank you very much. With that, I would like to go ahead uh, and uh, ask you if you have some quick tips for the resume writing. Sure. Uh, we should keep like uh, certain points while preparing our resume. So keep it, uh, first I would start with keep your resume short and crisp by highlighting your education experience. It can be research experience or work experience, whichever is applicable. Then skill set and few major accomplishments. You as a job seeker won't be having one-on-one -on -one session with an employer where you talk about your achievements, so that little short document is going to speak on your behalf. So, uh, that, and that, is, that little document is the first step to grab employers' attention. So we have to be innovative in presenting yourself on a piece of paper that your resume stands out in a highly competitive job uh, market. And you have to tailor your resume according to the job requirement. As I uh, mentioned earlier about just taking out all, all the irrelevant skills of the resume. And then remember to include your LinkedIn profile web link where you can expand on your education, research activities, or any publications or any other leadership activities that you may have. 
So with that, I would like to uh, show you an example of a very uh, a creative CV that's one of my favorite of uh, none other than a very great personality. Uh, Please go ahead and share the resume with us. Thank you, Dr. Khodbagi. So uh, that's a, a resume, uh, one of my favorite. Re Can you see my screen? No, not yet. Um, I just sent you the screen share link. Can you see it now? I guess it's disabled on your end. Can you please enable it? I have enabled it. Okay. Can you try to do it again on your side? Um, sure. Can you see it now? Yes, there you go. Thank you very much. And uh, my apologies for any technical inconvenience, but that's completely fine. So here is an example of a very interesting uh, C a resume out there on the internet uh, of, of none other than a very great, uh, creative, talented, and famous personality, Elon Musk. Who I'm sure you have to run through the list of adjectives when you're talking about Elon Musk. Who doesn't know Elon Musk? Sure. Excellent. Yeah. So, so if you look at his resume, he has used a different color coordination in his work experience. Uh, and uh, he has chosen a different bullet format by highlighting it in red big squares. So we, we can have a quickly glance at his resume. And if you look at the skills and competencies section, then he has used the uh, scale bar format. So that actually highlights what, what are his strengths. So by looking at his resume, we can see say that resume is competency based and it's one of the best example I came across. You can be creative and choose your own format in uh, writing and like putting uh, your achievements and skills uh, on a piece of paper. Thank you very much. So this was an excellent example of how a resume should really look like. So viewers, don't get intimidated by Elon Musk's uh, resume. You really don't have to worry about the uh, skills and competencies and his achievements, but you can make sure that you should have the knack of highlighting your skills and competencies as good as Elon Musk. You never know you could be the next generation Elon Musk. Yeah, so that was excellent. I, I loved it. Yeah, so with that, coming to the uh, art of writing a resume, this has been really helpful. But what would be different when you are trying to design a CV for some industrial or academic position? I'm sorry, to an academic position. Uh, um, so basically CV showcases all your credentials. So all the certifications, affiliations, and is very generic and comprehensive. But again, it can be customized for the job requirement. So what can we do to, do, to customize it? So we can rearrange the sequence of the se uh, sections based on the job requirement so that the main uh, skill is highlight highlighted in, in your resume for the job requirement. So for example, if you're applying for a faculty position, you wanna elaborate more on the teaching activities or skills uh, in that you can include what are the co courses you've taught or what are the method of methods of teaching uh, that were used to engage students and what kind of feedback or rating did you get from students. Same, uh, uh, similarly, we can, um, if you are applying for a research position, Again, that is not limited to a postdoctorate or research engineering res engineer position. Uh, it could be a reviewer or editor position. So in that case, you want to emphasize more on uh, your research background, area of expertise, publications, conference presentations, and more importantly, committee positions you have been on or you are currently uh, having a one. So it has to be specifically expansive. 
So, and there is one more uh, point I would uh, like to mention here is CV summary. So for, uh, you can still in CV in that document, you can still include all your credentials, but it has to be in a condensed format. For example, if you have 50 publications or 100 presentations, you want to highlight a few major ones along with the Google Scholar link or ResearchGate link. Uh, if anyone is interested, can look through any of your profile out there. And uh, it's not only important for uh, like getting a job, but also if they want to co uh, collaborate with you or uh, something like that, uh, they can like uh, look at it uh, through these websites. So that's that's very clear. Uh, when you are uh, trying to write a CV, you can take the liberty of uh, putting in as much as possible to show what you are good at. May it be your uh, research career, your teaching career, or your extracurricular activities, your outreach programs, and all those things that can go into a CV. So you can take a liberty in writing as much as possible to, sh to you know, stand out of the other, uh, uh, other applicants. So with all this, what would be your important take home message to our job seekers? So in this digital world, we are, we are adopting new methods of sharing information. Uh, we should actively engage ourselves in using professional networking webs as a platform for sharing ideas, having discussions or expanding our skills. These webs, webs are quite useful to look for new job opportunities as well. Same as the series, it's a learning one. Keep working on updating your profile as you go and making it better. There is always a chance for improvement. So with that, I would say, thanks for watching this video. Stay healthy, stay happy. Please feel free to reach out for questions you may have, preferably through LinkedIn Messenger. And Dr. Kodbagi, wishing you the best for upcoming sessions. Thank you very much. So I would like to just summarize the points you said. So the points to remember to all you job seekers out there is, first, resume and CV are two different documents. Use a very short resume for industrial applications. See what your job profile is and make sure that you can reorganize, rearrange, and um, tune the uh, resume according to the job description in the job posting. You might as well go ahead and use the keywords from the job description so that your resume can, you know, be quickly looked at and they know what they're looking for and you still have the skill sets because of the keywords you're using into your resume. And with the CV, make sure that you have an impressive research career or you should have the knack of showing how impressive and competent you can be by trying to include as much as career and research activities you have done in that entire document because in that document you really have the freedom to explain in details what you have done throughout your research career throughout your um, experience professional experience so keeping this in mind i would like to thank dr batra for uh, her precious time today and uh, please keep guiding us in the future if necessary and with this i would like to thank all my viewers for your support and stay tuned and keep watching such informational videos i am going to post these videos once every week and always remember, it's a learning curve. So please keep watching. It's the learning curve. Thank you very much. Thank you.